Architecture's a knack of plating up great stories. And this house in the leafy Sydney suburb of Linfield has been holding a secret for over 50 years. It's the home of doctors Henry Fogel and Stephanie Way, built for their family in 1970. What are your earliest memories of the house? I guess my earliest memories are the swimming pool. I was constantly in the pool with my brother, or all my friends would come over and we'd swim all afternoon, all weekends. And we'd roam in the bush, and then we'd come back for a swim, then we'd roam in the bush, come back for a swim, and all the neighbourhood kids in the street would come up. How did your parents entertain? I remember all their friends here laughing in their long dresses and um, having their martinis and their whiskies and having long lunches on the deck. And dinner parties. And dinner parties. parties. They'd also come here for drinks. This was before RPT as well. Yeah. Drink for about an hour and a half and then all drive to the restaurant. And then they'd come back and have some more and then they'd all go home. <laughs> Often old, I yeah. would have to um, clean up afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> what did the house mean to them? It was their heart and soul. You know, they would. I think they would come home from working long hours and both the surgeries, and this this was their. It was like their Camelot, and it was their sanctuary. Dr. Fogel expressed his love of architecture when he enlisted Neville Grusman, one of the city's finest architects, to design his surgery. It was a very open, very friendly surgery. And why was that important to your dad to have a, a well-built and well-designed building? That's how I knew him, and that's all, that's how he wanted, everything had to be perfect. Everything had to be the best it could be, um, the best in the street. Um, everything was, to him, had to be 100%. After using an architect of the calibre of Grisman to design his workplace, it may seem strange that he enlisted a young unknown to build their forever home. But there was a very big name hiding behind the curtain. My father was in a lot of businesses as well as being a, a doctor um, and he had a lot of contacts all around the world. He went to California and it was a hush-hush trip and he particularly wanted Frank Lloyd Wright. And he went and bought some plans and um, came straight back with the plans tucked into his suitcase. Obviously that was something that you didn't tell people that you were doing because they weren't supposed to be sold? Or... Yes, I believe so, they weren't supposed to be sold. And so it's been part of the story of this house. Mm. And I found a book, a Frank Lloyd Wright book, still with the receipt from 1964, bought in New York, and with a picture of a very similar house to this in the back. Adding to the design pedigree of this house is the bespoke cabinetry and furniture. He was friends with um, Paul Kafka, and he um, asked him to fit out the whole the house and with the furniture with the with the built-ins with everything every room has got Kafka in yeah, it the whole thing it's incredible to look at Kafka was responsible for some of the best interiors of the post-war period including the iconic Rose Seidler house and this is believed to be the most extensive example of his work in existence it presents today exactly how it was exactly how it was yeah so downstairs was the laundry kitchenette, the sunroom for Sunday afternoon lunches, which would open straight onto the grass. And mum had her study there where she did one of her many lessons that she studied seven languages and always was learning. It's a house full of things well collected. And so yes. They, they, they traveled and... They traveled a lot. They traveled a couple of times a year and they constantly brought things back, as you can see from the, the masks downstairs. Yeah. I don't think you could bring those in anymore. No. Were you allowed to touch things or was it? I was not allowed in this room or into that, or into the formal dining room. These doors were locked off. Yeah. Even when I was 18, I don't think I was allowed in here. Wow. Yeah. So, so here we are here now. Here we are now, <laughs> and I'm really enjoying this. Your hope is that someone buys the house, that loves it for what, what it represents. And wants to look after it just as it is. What about your, your parents' wish for the house? They would want someone who would come in and love it and care for it and appreciate it like they did. 